Hi, if you are new to this channel, I am uh, Nilton. I uh, work in Wall Street in New York City. I am an Oracle certified Java developer with over 20 years of experience and I am the founder of craftofprogramming.com. The craftofprogramming.com is an educational website that is primarily focused on teaching general computer science concepts, programming languages, APIs and software tools. So if you like the content uh, of my videos, then please don't forget to subscribe. Also, uh, give it a thumbs up and click on the notification bell so that you are notified about regular content that I post here. And leave a comment below or anything that you would like to me to improve or any topic you'd like me to cover. Let's get started with today's video. Hi, so today I am going to talk to you about Cucumber. So no, that's not about you know the vegetable cucumber. This did not. Uh, this channel has not you know been converted to a cooking channel. Uh, cucumber is a tool that enables you to write BDD uh, specifications. So what is BDD? BDD stands for Behavior Driven Design or Behavior Driven Development, and essentially is a way for you to. Um, define what the system should do via examples um, as opposed to how. So it's a much more uh, higher level of um, specifying um, you know, examples or specifications for a system as opposed to the traditional way that developers use via um, you know, unit tests, for example, in JUnit in the Java ecosystem. So one thing I need to mention about uh, Cucumber is that it's just a specification. So it's actually implemented in many different uh, popular programming languages. I'm going to be showing you um, Cucumber uh, implemented in Java, but you can use Cucumber with Groovy, with Go, with C++, JavaScript, Ruby, and you know, pretty much um, all the popular popular programming languages uh, have uh, you know a cucumber implementation so the big advantage of cucumber i suppose is that in, it enables uh, non-technical people unlike say unit tests to write specifications so you can have um, you know obviously qa people quality assurance people writing these tests you have end users you know be able to write them because it's as you will see it's just pretty much plain English. Cucumber is, uses a language called Gherkin. So Gherkin is basically um, a set of keywords uh, that you use to um, you know, define the, uh, the steps for, for the behavior-driven uh, design approach. Um, the Gherkin can be implemented in many different natural languages. Uh, so I today I'm going to be talking in English, but there are Gherkin implementations. They're called Gherkin dialects in pretty much, uh, you know, the most popular natural languages. So you can write your Gherkin uh, specifications in French, in Portuguese, in Russian, in Chinese, Japanese. Any pretty much all of the popular natural languages have a Gherkin dialect available. So I spoke about um, Cucumber as a tool that uh, supports behavior-driven design. I've spoken about Gherkin as the language that enables you to write Cucumber tests. And uh, I've not really went into detail about BDD. So behavior-driven design or behavior-driven development uses basically three keywords, given, when, and then, to specify a specification for a particular feature. So the given is used to set the state for the um, specification or for the example. The when is used to specify an action that you're going to um, apply onto the system. And this action on the when can be via an end user. For example, you have a user interface um, and the user clicks on something, for example, on a button to query something. Or it could be a, a subsystem that is actually um, exercising an action onto the system. So you have the given, the when, and then the then, which is the last step in the BDD, 
is to actually do the assertion or the validation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, add the uh, Cucumber uh, library to our project, to our Gradle project, as well as Cucumber, as the Cucumber plugin. So as you know, I'm a big fan of IntelliJ IDEA. So this um, example or this introduction to Cucumber, I'm going to be using Java as the implementation language for Cucumber. Um, I'm going to be using Gradle as the um, you know build management project and IntelliJ IDEA. So these steps, obviously, if you're using Maven instead of Gradle or maybe using a different IDE instead of IntelliJ, are very similar. So, so the first thing you're going to do, as I say, is to add the Cucumber uh, library dependency to our Gradle project. So let me open the Gradle project and basically um, <coughs> I'm going to be using a test implementation, test implementation, and let's use um, io dot cucumber cucumber dash uh, Java. Let's pick the version six dot one dot one. Okay. And we might want to do a JUnit. This is so that uh, we can use JUnit runners to run a Cucumber. We will see that shortly. So let's update our Gradle and see if we can fetch the... Um, if it downloads the uh, Cucumber libraries. Okay, so you see that I've got the um, Cucumber uh, libraries and dependencies um, uh, in my system here, in my project. So another thing that we need is the Cucumber plugin. So actually, I already have it installed here. But anyway, you need to get the Cucumber plugin for Java in IntelliJ. So get this Cucumber for Java plugin. So now that we have our project configured, we have the Cucumber library configured in our Gradle project, we've got the Cucumber plugin. Let's uh, dive into some uh, Cucumber uh, feature examples. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the um, system under test. Let's understand it a little bit. So I've got here a library service which um, enables the um, a user to basically run queries against a you know hypothetical library. So you can query um, books a book by a title here. You can query um, the sorted uh, computer books by title. You can, you know, query the library to give you the most popular topic and available topics we have, he have here is computing, sci-fi, finance, novel. We can get all of the titles in my library, all of the books uh, grouped by topic, as well as the count of books by topic. So uh, this is the system that we're going to be uh, testing using Cucumber. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a Cucumber feature. So the um, recommended way to structure your features in Cucumber is to add them to the source test resources um, directory. So all your feature files are going to go to the source test resources. And uh, let's give it a name. So let's say query um, my I'll just say query library service dot feature. So all of the uh, Cucumber features have the feature extension. So notice that because I have the uh, Cucumber for Java plugin in IntelliJ, then uh, IntelliJ has recognized this file as a Cucumber feature file. Okay, so now we have our feature file. So um, the way we um, implement features is by um, giving it a name, which is, um, sorry, not scenario, it's using the feature. So every uh, Cucumber uh, feature file starts with a feature. And here is basically where you would give a description of what this um, you know, Cucumber feature file is you know, testing. What's the specification for this? So in this simple example, it will be to uh, query um, you know, books uh, from the uh, library service. So let's just say query books uh, from the library service. Okay. So then um, you've got a title for the feature and then you have a scenario. So another nice thing I want to point out is that notice that um, 
I have auto completion here in IntelliJ. So I just start typing SC and IntelliJ already gave me the option. So I've got, I can uh, specify scenario, it's not an outline or it's not a template. We're going to cover each in turn. So as you see here at the bottom, when I, I just typed Control Shift A, which opens the actions. So notice that when I type that, it displays the um, keyboard shortcut that I have typed. I mean, I'm using Windows, but I'm also putting in parentheses the equivalent keyboard shortcut for Mac. Um, so um, if you want to see when I do some action by the keyboard, what the corresponding action is in Windows or in Mac, then you will see it displayed at the bottom. Anyway, let's move on. So now we have um, the title for a feature and scenario. So scenario is essentially where you define a specific test or specification, right? Uh, think of it as your JUnit uh, test method, okay? So essentially a feature is composed of multiple scenarios, right? And you want to group within a feature scenarios that are related, okay? Okay, so let's say that I want to query my library for a specific book. So let's call this scenario query um, the library service for a um, specific book given a title. Okay, so again, remember that um, Gherkin slash Cucumber, it's all about behavior driven design, so you have to uh, pretty much use the keywords given, when, then on each scenario. So you start by using given, which set the state for your test. And given that the uh, uh, library service, say, is uh, initialized, okay, when I query the library service for the, um, let's say, effective java book then uh, it is true that i find it okay so given when then now a bit of terminology here uh, given uh, it, each of these lines here given when and then are called steps of a scenario and a step definition is the actual code, in this case, the actual Java code that is going to implement each of those steps. Because obviously, as you can see, this is just plain English. These plain English sentences, or each of these plain English sentences, each of these steps needs to be implemented in Java code in order for it to be executable. So that's what step definition is. So, and that's exactly what this IntelliJ Cucumber plugin is giving me here, right? So when I write, when I do Alt Enter here in Windows, it gives me the option to create all step definitions. So let's get that option. Uh, actually, let's put this in quotes and I'll explain to you shortly why. So let's create all the step definitions. Now, just like um, feature files go to source test resources, step definitions, which by the way, some people call it glue code, are by default uh, added to the source test Java folder. So let's accept the my step definition default class name that uh, IntelliJ is giving us here, and let's press enter. So now let's split this stuff up here so that we can compare the um, the uh, um, Cucumber uh, feature file on the left and the glue code on the right. So notice that for each of these steps, I've got a step definition. As a matter of fact, I can navigate from the Cucumber code onto the corresponding step definition of glue code in Java, okay? And another thing I need to point out is something called a Cucumber expression. So how is it that, um, you know, Cucumber knows that this uh, line here maps to that, right? So it's not because of the given keyword, it's because of this expression here, okay? So uh, there are two ways for you to map a Cucumber step with a Cucumber step definition. One is using Cucumber expressions, which is what I'm using here. The other one is using regular expressions. So either or are supported in Cucumber. So another thing that you see here is um, 
you know, the, the, the parameters or the arguments to these methods, which I specify here, are being, um, you know, already um, enclosed with these curly braces. So Cucumber for Java does automatic conversion of strings to quite a bit of the, you know, Java built-in types. So things like strings, um, you know, all of the primitives like big decimals and, um, you know, longs and um, R support enums, all of these types are automatically converted. If you have a more complex um, object or data type, then you have to provide a explicit uh, type conversion. Okay, so but for these simple examples, that's what we have. So let's rename this our book title. And here is basically, um, you know, um, let's just call this exists. All right, good. So now let's uh, write this code. So let's implement this. So first of all, let's have here a library service. Okay, this is my library service. Now this step calls for the initialization. So let's initialize here. Okay, so we have this step, the initialization of the service, and in this step we're going to query it using the book title. Okay, so this step requires that I uh, query the book Okay, so I have my library service. Okay, let's use the get book with title. Okay, and let's pass the book title. All right, let's assign this to, um, you know, a book. Okay, and obviously because um, the assertion is done on a different step, then let's convert this to a field. All right. So in this step, we're going to actually use the parameter to do the correct assertion. So let's actually rename this to um, is true, you know, string. The first thing we're going to do is let's convert this um, string to a Boolean. Okay, so is true, all right? And then let's use this, um, you know, is true to basically um, do the assertion. Okay, so if it is true, then we're going to do the assertion. So we're going to assert that it's not now that the book exists and else we're going to do the assert null. Okay. So now that we have this uh, step definition, um, you know, all this step definition implemented, let's run it. So in IntelliJ, you just click on the um, feature and you go to run and you can just click run the feature. All right. So as you see, the test passes. OK. And you can clearly see here that, um, you know, the feature passes and you can see the steps that it got executed. All right. So uh, for the sake of example, let's just assume that let's just do something wrong, you know, like say query for Java, just for you to see, you know, when something doesn't go well, what type of error you get. So notice that the first two steps pass, you know, because we're not doing any validation, but you know, there was no exceptions or anything. And then this assertion failed. Okay. And you can see, um, you know, um, that the step uh, failed. And obviously if you were doing something production ready, you know, it's always recommended to add a um, assertion error message here. But for this specific example, you know, it's just an introduction. Okay. So cool. So um, another thing I need to point out, which, you know, again, in an introduction, I can't really go into much detail is um, notice that I'm actually here converting the string to a Boolean. There is a more, you know, um, perhaps um, I should say a canonical way or um, idiomatic way to do this conversion of strings to, you know, built-in Java types. Um, okay, anyway, let's move on. So back to our scenario here. So that's a simple scenario. One thing that I want to point out is if you are doing a sort of more complex initialization, then there is the end keyword, right? So I could say end, um, you know, output more stuff here and um, let's say that to set up the library, you know, initialize is not enough, then and, uh, you know, say the library service, you know, is loaded, uh, you know, 
something something right or for example here I could say I queried the service for defective Java and you know dot 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 something else right or even then then it is true that I find it and you know I can do more assertion so the point is that you're not constrained or just using three steps per scenario you can do as many as you want right okay so that's the end keyword which is used for that there is another keyword in cucumber which is called but okay which is kind of the opposite um, but again you know there is I don't have um, there is no time to cover that okay so let's add another scenario here and let's say that let's do another query so let's look at the library service here and um, I don't know there is like the most popular topic for example let's query the library for that I mean in my library I know that the most popular topic is computing so query uh, the library service for the most popular topic okay then again given let's just copy this that the library is is initialized when I query the um, library service for the most popular topic then I get computing okay okay because that's the most popular topic all right so notice uh, a few things here so firstly this step uh, is mm, um, you know already mapped because it's the same as before but these two steps are not so let's um, there's a typo here this is called popular let's uh, map this okay create step definition so I have the option to create a new step definition file or use the same let's just put it on the same file let's go back to this and also add that step definition all right so now we have two new step definitions that we would like we have to implement okay so the most popular topic I created the library service for the most popular topic so library service um, you know most popular topic all right let's assign this topic let's convert this to field okay good and then we have the optional there all right okay so now let's implement the I get here so notice that because I have specified the uh, computing in double quotes by the way double quotes or single quotes is the same in cucumber then the step definition um, uh, the expression has a string in the as the parameter strings is the cucumber expression for um, you know words and the words can have white spaces okay uh, there is another one called word and if you do that then this is basically you know strings without white spaces okay so um, I can do that and then convert this to my you know topic enum because topic is an enum in my domain but let me show you a different way of doing it so if you use just these um, curly braces like that then cucumber matches anything and the nice thing about it is that then I can now convert this uh, to an enum okay so I can just say that um, I want a topic okay so now let's write my assertion here now that I have converted the topic so first let's call this the actual topic and let's assert assert equals that the actual topic is matches the topic okay and it's called get because it's a it's an optional all right so that's what we are doing here so again this is a nice way to automatically uh, take advantage of the built-in conversion of cucumber from a um, of string to an enum okay okay so let's run this and see what we get So notice that the um, this tab here I get computing failed because um, cucumber is saying that it cannot convert uh, the um, the argument that is passed here to step definition and this is actually because this is a string in double quotes but so actually you have to remove it so now if you remove it this is going to match to anything 
and then cucumbers hopefully should be able to convert it let's uh, rerun it and see so as you see the step now uh, the validation now passes okay so one last thing I'd like to point out here is there is a keyword um, in uh, cucumber called background and background is typically used to um, put common steps that are um, you know common across multiple scenarios and obviously we have here a given that the library is initialized which is duplicate so let's just remove it and put it here okay and let's always remove it from there and basically what this does is the background is as I say where you put common steps that are run and the background it runs first all of the steps so for example if I had another and here blah 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 those two steps would run first and then the steps for the scenario would run and then before the, the second scenario is run then the background uh, steps would run for, okay so let's rerun this and see what that the uh, tests can still pass okay so that kind of concludes the video on introduction to cucumber I mean there is much much more to cover um, uh, for example I didn't even mention about comments um, you add comments in cucumber as so as such um, there is many other things that I didn't have time to cover like uh, for example scenario uh, outline or templates um, uh, there is another feature called uh, data tables which is a nice way to uh, you know um, format and provide parameters on a tabular form to a uh, scenario test um, and many other features but I think for an introduction on Cucumber I hope that this gave you a good idea thanks for watching so if you found this topic interesting and would like me to uh, create more videos related to it then uh, please let me know in the comments section below and uh, if I see that there is enough interest and demand, then I will create a full course on the subject.